All right, what is going on, everybody? This is Sparkle Fresh, and I am back to another golf lesson on the golf club. And today, this is going to be lesson number two. And basically, what this lesson is going to consist of is a general overview. I'm going to play a couple holes, and I'm going to give you my exact thought process that goes basically everything that I think when I'm hitting a golf shot. Um, and then through the rest of the lessons, basically what I'm going to be doing is kind of breaking all of these thoughts down individually. Uh, from different sectors, whether it's driving or putting or chipping or hitting approach shots, hitting into the wind or whatever it may be. I'm going to break all of that stuff down. So eventually by the end of this series, you'll have a way better understanding of what you need to think about when you're playing to play better and also make this game more enjoyable because shooting you know, extremely high scores is, is not fun at all. The very first hole, however, I'm going to go through and I'm just going to play it. The reason I'm going to do this is because I want to show you how quickly, um, how quickly I play as opposed to how much stuff you actually have to think about. So this is the first hole. There are ghosts on this course, so I'm just going to take a quick look. Stay in the short grass. Oh, beautiful. Not bad for the first one of the day. I'm not going to talk too much during these. Ooh. Get up. Not the best shot in the world. It is quite all right though. Whoa, buddy. Had a lot of backspin on that. Alright. So now we're going to get into the next couple holes, and I'm going to dabble into my entire thought process that goes in to every shot that I'm hitting. So first and foremost, I'm going to get a brief overview. I'm going to push the circle button. And I'm going to see exactly the distance because this club, the driver, will genuinely carry 265 yards. That's what it says at least. Now there's a lot of other factors to consider into that. But basically what I'm doing when I'm, when I'm getting this overhead view is I'm seeing what's around me. I'm looking at the fairway bunkers. I'm also looking at the trees overhanging the course. So I already I can tell on this shot, if I know if I miss it to the left, it's going to be a lot more difficult of a second shot because there's a big grouping of trees. You see up by the 350 yard marker uh, up to the left a little bit. So missing it to the right would be a little bit better, but we don't want to miss it, but it is something to take into consideration. Now we have to look at the wind. All right, the wind is blowing nine miles an hour east, so it's blowing from left to right. That is definitely going to affect our shot. The next thing that I'm going to look at is the undulations in the fairway to see when my ball lands, how is that going to affect, um, you know, how, how is the terrain of the fairway going to affect the ball when it lands? Is it gonna kick it one direction or another? From what I could see right here, it's nothing too crazy. It's not, unless I, you know, hit it way out here, the ball's not gonna land outside of the fairway. And luckily the wind is blowing to the right a little bit, so. Missing it on the left side shouldn't be that big of a deal. So now that we've kind of decided what we want to do, we got a good landing area. You might want to go just double check one more time and see where you're lined up. So we have a pretty good alignment, but we might want to come over a little bit more to the left because we know the wind is going to carry our ball to the right. And then we're just going to pull the trigger. We're going to trust our thought process and we're just going to go with it. So the wind obviously took the ball a little bit more to the to the right than I was originally expecting, but that's okay. 
because now we're in the light rough. So one of the first things that you have to take into consideration when you get in the rough is you look up to the top right of the screen. It'll tell you um, what your ball's sitting in the fairway. Right now we're in the light rough, and you see the indicator is from 85% to 96%. Essentially what that means is that even if you hit 100% uh, power, you're never going to hit 100% power. You're never going to hit it 170 yards. The most you can hit it is at 96%. So the way that it penalizes you by hitting it in the rough is that you don't really know how far you're going to hit it. Now, why that is going to end up mattering is because when we come up to the hole right here, we want to get a, a good idea of what's going on. I, haven't, I still haven't figured these controls out 100%. Uh, so. Pardon me. So we're going to look at the trajectory, not the trajectory. We're going to look at the undulations in the green and see how it's going to affect our ball. So we see that there's a big backstop behind the hole, which is a good thing. And we also see that everything on this side kind of breaks off of the green, which we, we definitely don't like. We don't want to do. And, and if you hit anything over here, it is going to run down to the hole area. And because we have a couple ghost balls that are on the green, we could see that the general area of the balls where they're going to be running is to that side of the green. So then we come back and we kind of look and see how much green we have to work with. So we have a good amount of green. We don't want to be overly long and we definitely don't want to be too short, but if we are, we want to be more on the left side because we're going to have a lot easier putt. Having to hit through you know, these undulations would be uh, not the easiest thing in the world. So we take that into consideration. We still have the wind uh, blowing from right to left. The hole is five feet downhill. So right now, if I just had to hit a six iron, this would actually be a pretty good club. But because we're in the rough and I'm not 100% sure what's going on, the, I'm going to bring it up a club. As you can see, my percentage actually goes down 1%, which isn't that big of a deal. But I'm going to add a little loft to it, which will help to stop it a little bit more. Because when you're hitting it in the rough, the ball has a tendency to you know, not have as much grip on it. So we still have to take the wind into consideration, but we don't want to be too far to the right. So right in this area, we just have to trust ourselves. Once you hit your shot, you just commit to it and you go for it. So unfortunately for us, I did not hit it far enough and now I have to deal with that putt that I absolutely didn't want to do. Now, I should not show this to you guys, but if you have a very tricky putt, I'm just going to show you, this is kind of like one of those advanced tips. Getting this putt close is not going to be easy, especially since the putting on this game is all to feel. So what you can do is you can pull out your lob wedge. You can actually do this in real life. I've, I've had to hit a couple shots. If there was like a kidney bean shaped green, I've actually hit it from one side of the green to the other. But um, I don't know, this is, it's kind of cheesy, but there are some scenarios in this game where you're going to have to do this. So I'll just go ahead and show you real quick. We pull out the lob wedge, and we, you want to go ahead and hit a flop shot. It's 17 yards, so that means that you can pretty much put this all the way up to 67%. And we're, the wind's not going to affect it too much because the ball's uh, not going to be in the air that long. But we can almost just go ahead and hit this 100%. The ball's going to have some backspin on it. And, yes. I mean, holy shit. <laughs> okay, I probably wouldn't have made that putt, though, so little things like that can benefit you. Um, and that worked out pretty well. All right, so the next hole, the same thing. I see the wind, nine miles an hour that way. The first thing I directly see in front of me is that tree, so now I'm going to do my overhead view. I don't see any fairway bunkers. I don't see any major trouble. So now I'm going to go look up at the fairway. So the fairway is, to be honest with you, it's pretty fl flat. There's a little bit of undulation, but overall it's not too big, nothing to worry about. So we're going to want to aim on the left side of the green over here, on the fairway, 
pardon me. We're just going to let the wind carry the ball for us. Nice. So the wind's going to bring it back just a little bit, even though I didn't hit it 100% center. And we're going to be right, right down the pipe. All right, we're right around 125. All right, so next we got our approach shot. First thing I notice is that we're eight feet uphill. We are a little bit downwind, so if I hit the ball in this, if I hit the ball this direction and let the wind carry it off to the right, it's actually going to add a little bit of distance because the wind is going to be pushing it. If you hit a draw into a green like this, like into the wind, it's going to push the ball down a little bit. So that's something that's kind of like advanced wind play. We can get into that a little bit later. But let's go look up at the green and see what we got to work with. So already you can see a massive slope in this direction. So the safe play is going to be over here. We do not want to be on this side. That is not going to be fun. And ideally, we want to be about pin high, maybe a little bit short of pin high. So we don't want to aim too far in this direction because we still want the ball to carry us. The ball's not really above our feet that much, so it's not going to affect us too much. We are going to, it is eight feet, eight feet up hills, not too much. If you know, if I hit this hundred percent because the wind is going to carry it, this should end up about pin high, even though my club only carries 120 yards. So I'm going to go ahead and trust it and I hope it works out for me. Come on, baby. That's what I'm talking about right there. And now you don't even have to think. Tapping in for birdie. Nothing wrong with that. All right. For the round. So off to the next hole. Hope we can get like a part three. Fourth hole coming up. This is not a part three. Same thing. I'm going to start going a little bit quicker now. We're directly downhill. The wind's not going to affect us that much. The fairway does have a little more slope from left to right. So that's going to affect the ball a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of uh, height to my swing so the ball will stay in the air longer. Hopefully we can get it over that big hill. I'm going to take it back. Oh, my finger slipped. Oh, I still hit it good. This one's looking good. All right, so we got it over the part we wanted to, and we're sitting pretty. I'd say around 105 yards or so to the pin here. All right, so we got 16 feet uphill, nine miles an hour downwind. We're gonna go check out the green, see what we have to deal with. The ghost balls aren't helping us too much. So we don't want to be short in this direction. Everything feeds off the green. And luckily it's pretty flat there and we kind of have a backstop. So if we hit it in this area, there's not really an indicator, but if we hit it in this area, the ball will kind of funnel down into the hole. So it's definitely a place that we want to aim. We want to aim a little bit to the right, to the left, sorry. I always say things backwards. I think I have a mild form of dyslexia. All right. So it is 11 feet short, but the wind is going to carry us the distance that we need, hopefully, because there is more loft, so the wind will have more effect on the shot. Pretty straight. I think that's going to end up decent if it gets all the way back there. Not quite. Slow down. So hindsight, you know, take a mental image of that, because you're going to have that scenario again, so... You know, I think I was, okay, I was that far uphill. The pin was that much above me. I had 11 yards, nine feet downhill. Like, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to take a club up next time. The more you play, the easier these things are going to become. Putting is something that is a little bit more tricky in this game. There's no bar, so it's going to be all based around feel. The, how fast the greens are and how slow the greens are. And it's really something that you're going to have to get used to uh, for yourself. The grid and the lines that you see right here, the way that I like to putt is I like to visualize the ball going in the hole. So I imagine the speed that I need to hit it. I always want to hit it about uh, 6 to 12 inches past the hole because you can't make a putt if it's short. And then I just kind of like to use the lines to help me uh, kind of visually guide, almost like track a ball going into the hole. It is always better to miss it on the high side than the short side. 
because once again, it is a lot easier to make a putt on the high side. And another quick note on putting is that the slope in front of you is going to affect how the ball breaks less than it is down the road because the speed is going to be greater when you first start. So even though the ball is sloping or the green is sloping from left to right a lot kind of more harsh directly in front of us, it's not going to have as much effect as the markers are going to be towards the hole. All right, so we'll try to visualize this. Um, I think I see a decent line. That was freaking pathetic. But I I was playing on incredibly uh, fast greens last night, and that was basically the first putt I've had to hit. So now I know. Lesson learned. Make a little adjustment. Save a par. Come on, par three. Give me a par three. Okay, so that's gonna keep you at two under for the round. All right. So this is this is. I'm just gonna end it on this one. This is a par five, the last hole. So we got a little bit of a dog leg left in front of us. We are gonna be better off landing it on the right side of the green or the fairway. I can already see that just because the grouping of trees on the left. It's not gonna be that big of a deal, but. You always want to leave room for air because you're not always going to hit a good shot. So now we're going to come check out the fairway. And it is sloping a little bit from left to, left to right, or right to left. So there's that backwards talk we talked about again. So if you come up here, you can actually see, it's kind of hard to see, but if you hit it right in this area, the ball is going off down here. And you're gonna have a very difficult shot. You're not gonna have a chance for eagle. You're not going to knock it on it too. Now the tricky part about this is going to be nine miles an hour wind blowing west or east, I guess. We turned around on the course. So there's a couple things you can do. You can actually hit a little bit of a fade. Wait, I'm kind of confused how that works. So I guess this would be me opening my stance. I don't know. You could hit a little bit of a fade, and what that's going to do, it's going to cut down some of the wind, but you're also going to end up hitting it a little bit uh, less yardage. So I'm still going to aim on the uh, right side of the fairway here, and I'm going to hit a little bit of fade, and the wind should hopefully put the ball just on the right side of the fairway, and we should have a nice shot into the green. So that fade kind of just straightened it out. And just a quick tip. The more that you mess with the height, uh, like the loft of your club and hitting a, a giant draw, it's going to decrease the impact area, meaning that you're going to have to hit it a lot better to give yourself an opportunity to hit the shot that you, you want to. So we're going to come, come up here and look, and this is kind of a risk reward type scenario. You don't want to hit a driver because, we'll show you, see the red impact bar we have going on there? So if I knock it up to a driver, that impact bar goes down to nothing. Now, if you want to go balls to the wall, be my guest. Try to hit it there. I dare you. But this is golf is a percentage game. It's not about gripping it as tight as you can and holding, you know, like trying to hit every shot as much as you want. It's about finesse. You want to hold the golf club like a little baby. You want to leave yourself the best opportunities to make good shots and to score. So hitting it to the right side over here is going to be a little bit better than the left because we're going to have this bunker to deal with. You always want to stay out of the sand as much as possible because the, uh, your percentage bar will drastically change. So I'm going to let the wind carry this a little bit more because I want it to float over more towards the hole. And I also want to get a little bit of extra distance out of it. So I think this should be, eh, give or take, we'll give her a whack, see what happens. 
Oh, I hit a little bit of a, a hook there. But luckily we were aimed far enough to the right side that it still ended up pretty safe. And even though we were going for it and we missed, we don't have, you know, we don't have a really difficult shot. So now you have a couple different options here. You can hit a pitch like they suggest. I personally always like to find something that is the closest yardage because when you're dealing with something uh, like a swing mechanic or using the analog stick, it's very difficult to hit it 90% or 80%. So even though the, the flop shot is gonna be in the air a little bit longer, I can pop this up one club and I can give myself it's going to carry 35 yards. So if I don't even go up right now to the green and look at this, I know that if I hit this, it's going to be right around what I need. Ooh. And it's just a lot easier way to play. So it's a lot of break in this little putt. All right. So that's going to be the end of uh, this lesson, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys the general overview of the thought process that goes into playing golf, hitting good shots, and really scoring well. Over the next few lessons, we'll, we'll dabble into all of these different things more. Um, as always, if you guys have any suggestions for videos you want to see, um, any courses you want me to check out, reviews you want me to do on stuff like that, be my guest. I've lived and breathed golf since I was a child. I, my dad was a golf pro. I was a scratch golfer at the age of 11, and I just, I mean, I know the game like the back of my hand, and I know how difficult it can be. So once again, take it easy on yourself. Really try to think, analyze your shots after you hit it. If you hit a bad shot, it's okay. That's how you learn. You don't learn from just constantly hitting, you know, everything perfect. So I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. There's going to be more to come, and have a good weekend. See you later.